Hello, this is Handyman Learning RV with part two of my inverter install. In this video, I'm going to do the wiring, install a sub panel, and I decided to install a dedicated GFCI outlet for the refrigerator. The nice way of doing it this way, I can leave the refrigerator on auto. Which was nice because one of the parts we were at, we decided to go out for the day and it turns out the power went out while we were gone. And didn't come on back on to the next day, but the refrigerator automatically went over to propane when the park power went out. So it's real nice to be able to have it on auto. The other nice thing is we were in Gaston, North Carolina, and we were leaving to go to Ocean City, which we have to go through the Bay Bridge Tunnel. In order to go through the Bay Bridge Tunnel, you have to have your propane turned off. So as we were getting everything set up to leave, I turned off the propane, went to the refrigerator outside area and took the cover off and unplugged the refrigerator from the dedicated circuit and plugged it into the receptacle circuit circuit that's ran off the inverter. And that way we didn't have to stop or anything when we got to the Bay Bridge Tunnel. And I'm also going to show you how I ran the wires for the remote panels for the inverter and the battery monitor. I decided to do this video with two versions in it. The first version is the short version where it will go over the 120 wiring that I did for a review of how I wired everything. It will also be followed by a little bit more detailed version for people that need a little bit more detail at the end. This is how I ran my AC wiring for my inverter. This is how I did it. They are not instructions, but how I ran my wiring. First thing I do is make sure the coach is unplugged and there's no AC power coming to the panel before I do anything. This is a short version of how I wired the 120 side of the inverter charger into my coach. There will be a little bit more detailed version after this short version. This upper wire is the input to the inverter. It goes to the breaker panel. The lower wire is the output. It will go to the sub panel. This is 10-2 gauge wire. On the other side of the inverter, I installed the optional GFIC outlet so I can plug my microwave into. This way I can use my microwave while boondocking. Then I ran the 10-2 wire over. We ran the top wire, which is the input to the inverter, into the breaker panel box. Then I took some 14-2 wire and ran it from the breaker panel box around and through the galley to the other side where it comes out, goes around and attached it, and goes up through the back area. Then on the outside of the coach is where the wire came up through. I take the wire and it ran it up to a new box where I installed a GFI outlet. That will now be the dedicated refrigerator outlet that runs off the circuit breaker instead of the inverter. This is the old plug that it's attached to the inverter receptacle. In the breaker panel, we disconnected the converter, receptacle, and GFCI wires from the breakers. We removed the receptacle wires and the GFCI wires and pulled them out of the back. The converter wires, I disconnected, rolled them up, and stuffed them into the bottom of the breaker box inside the converter. It is no longer being used. For the bottom breaker that is for the receptacle and the converter, I removed and replaced it with a single 30 amp breaker that I attached the wire that I brought over from the inverter to. The GFI breaker that I disconnected the wire and pulled out is now going to be connected to the dedicated wire that I ran over from the refrigerator to be a dedicated refrigerator breaker. Now the labels are labeled as the top one still main, second one still AC. The third one is the microwave but it's no longer being used because the microwave is plugged into the inverter. Then the next one is a dedicated refrigerator breaker and finally the bottom one is a 30 amp breaker for the inverter charger. As you can see I relabeled the breaker panel to reflect where all the breakers and what they control and where they're at located. I took the wire that came out of the inverter output, the lower wire, and the two wires that came out of the 
breaker panel for the receptacles and the GCFI and ran them up through the bottom of the closet that's right above the breaker panel. And I installed the wires into the new sub panel, attached all the wires and breakers and put the cover on. Then I labeled the sub panel to tell you which breaker controls what outlet. Now I'm going to show you how I ran the wires to install the upper remote display panels in the upper cabinet. I installed the remote for the inverter and the battery monitor to run the wires. I removed the back panel, panel and did the same over here. Removed the shield underneath and the back panel and drop the lights. The lights are easy, they just you're just spring loaded, you pull down and they snap out. Removed the receptacle so I have anything, and I just ran the wire. From over here, over here, ran them down, pulled them across with the wire run, with the old, pulled them all the way over, had them come out right there. Sliding door right here. If you take the the bottom guide out and push down, you can get it all the way across. And there's the wires running down. So then I'm fish wires down, ran them over. To the shunt and to the inverter. That's all it was to install okay, the remote. When I put the panel back on, I'm not going to staple it or anything. I'm just going to put a couple screws on the top, bottom, and side. Well, I'm not going to even put any on the bottom. The top and the sides, two screws each. And I'm going to do the same thing over here when I put the panel back on. That way, if ever I have to access either side, all I do is cut and remove a couple screws and I'll be able to access it. A little bit more detailed install is next. Now to take out the breaker, you just use a number two head screwdriver and there's just two screws to take the cover off and four screws to take the panel loose and it will pull right on out. With this panel being on the passenger side of the coach and my refrigerator being on the driver's side of the coach, I'm going to run some 14Q gauge wire over to the refrigerator and I'm going to show you how I run the wire over to it. The power cable from one side to the other. We're going to take off the bottom grill of the refrigerator where the furnace is. There's a little galley right here where the wires run through. It goes all the way to the other side right here. I'm going to fish the wire through. There. fish through. Side of the RV where the refrigerator is removed the panel you'll see hoses and wires coming up with waterproof foam going around them. I removed the foam that goes around the wires so I can fish the wire up to the back of the refrigerator. Back in that back corner is where the wires go up. So I took the wire up through there and now we'll go around to the outside and pull the wires through the outside. The bottom breaker is for the converter and the receptacle. That one's no longer be used. So I'm going to pull it out and disconnect the wires. Just loosen up that screw a little bit and the wires will pop right on out. Loosen up, loosen up. That wire will pull right on out. It'll pull this right down. Cap all three of these together because I'm no longer be using the converter anyway. I can stuff that right down there. And I'll disconnect the green and the white and put them down there also. The other circuit on this breaker is for the GFIC receptacle. I'm going to be disconnecting that one also. Just loosen it up a little and pull the wire out. Then I'll disconnect the ground and neutral wire also. The GFIC wires I'm going to be pulling out of the, of the breaker box to put up into the sub panel. All I do is Go to the back where the relief, drain relief is, and there's two tabs on it. I push on the two tabs and pull it out. And it's pretty simple. The next breaker up has the receptacle outlet on the bottom breaker. So I loosen it up and pull the wire up. Then I also disconnect 
the neutral and ground wire also. Then I will pull those wires out the back because they'll be going up to the sub panel box also. Just as I did the other one. Then I take some 10 2 wire and run it from the inverter into the circuit breaker panel. I strip the wires and get ready to connect them. Connect the black wire to a new 30 amp breaker, the neutral, neutral bar, and the ground to the ground bar. And that's ready to snap right back into place. To snap it back into place, angle it and snap the back side in, then rotate it into place. Yeah. And now you got the 30 amp breaker in there. So now I'm going to take the wire that I ran across from the refrigerator area and bring that around breaker box. And we're just going to take this, bring this up. So you do the same thing and release as the other one. Now with the wires pulled through, I take the neutral wire and connect it to the neutral bar up top and take the ground wire and connect it to the ground bar on the side. Then I take out that circuit breaker so I can attach the black wire to it. Then I position both circuit breaker back into the proper location. I snap the strain relief in. And now we got 30 amp in for the inverter charger. The breaker that used to be for the GFI outlets are now for a dedicated refrigerator. Now it's time to put in the sub panel. I'm going to take the GFI wire and the receptacle wire that I took out of the breaker box and run it up through the bottom of my closet to the new sub panel. This is the sub panel that we'll be getting put in. This is where it will go. Put it in, I'm gonna have to drill two holes and the wires come through. I reversed the wires that the holes came in so I could install the restraint relief and install them into the sub panel box for a better fit. I'll hook up the wires in a second. I'll show you how the wires are hooked up and mount this against the wall. are separate so I took a 10 gauge wire and made a jumper. Make a jumper. There. That side's in. So I take the jumper wire and insert it into the sub panel left terminal and tighten it. Then I take the right terminal and enter the jumper wire and the input wire that's coming from the inverter output and tighten it. And those are in. I'm going to use the left bus bar for the white neutral wires. And the right bus bar for the ground wires. So we got the neutrals and we got the ground. Simple. Loosen up, slide in, tighten down. One down. One. Now if you tighten it 
magnet. Take it. Snap. Snap. And there's the breakers. Breakers are in. There you go. And that's the sub panel. Wired up. And I'll label the breakers. And the sub panel has been labeled with the left one being for the receptacles and the right one being for the GFI receptacles. I also relabeled the breaker panel with the top still being the main, the second one still the AC, the third one used to be the microwave, it's no longer used because the microwave is now plugged into the inverter and the breaker for that plug is on the inverter. And the next one is the refrigerator, which is on its own dedicated breaker so it does not wear down the battery running off the inverter. The receptacle and GFI breakers are located above in the sub-panel in the closet. Now, this is the plug for the refrigerator. We're going to be adding the other plug right above it, right up here. I'm put the box right up here. Refrigerator here. plug. And that's where the new box is going to be. This is the old refrigerator outlet that ran off the receptacle circuit breaker. And that's going to be running off the inverter now. And this is the new GFI outlet that's a dedicated from the circuit breaker. So it will not run off the, out, the inverter. Then I came inside and routed the wires in a safe location and used wire retainers to hold the wires in place. Now it's time to hook AC wires up to the inverter box. Here, first one we're going to do take these knockouts out. I'm going to be using this style of hand relief that should just snap right on in. The top one is the inverter input and the wire coming from the main panel box will plug into the top one. The bottom one is the feed one that will go to feed the sub panel. Okay, you got to hold them open while you put them in. Okay, all of them are lined up. Pull. Push all the way in and lock. That's it. Now we'll install the strain on relief. Strain leaf is locked in. Now we're doing the output side. Okay. So we'll put the wires about right there. And strip them. That's good. Okay, I need my spring relief. Slide the spring relief on first. So the spring relief is on. But now we're going to slide in. Take them up. Make sure we have them all in the proper holes. There, all of them are in the proper holes. Left, push in. Green relief up. Snap it in. Tighten it 
tighten down the crane relief. There we go. Tight. The cool thing about these crane reliefs is they do rotate and stuff, but they're not going to pull out. And that is AC bars hooked up.